there are eight characteristics that living organisms share. Movement, which is the ability of an organism to change its position. Movement is easy to see in animals, but plants also show movement. They grow in the direction of a stimulus such as sunlight or gravity. Reproduction is where an organism produces offspring. Being able to respond to their surroundings or sensitivity, this is the ability of an organism to detect and respond to stimuli. A stimulus is a change in the environment. These stimuli include things like light, Lumos maximum, or temperature. They are detected by specialized cells called receptors. In animals, receptors can be located in our eyes, our ears, our tongue, skin, and nose, with each receptor responsible for detecting different stimuli. Living organisms grow and develop. This is the ability to increase in size or dry mass by increasing the number of cells or size of cells. Respiration is a crucial metabolic reaction that releases energy in the form of ATP, which is an energy carrying molecule found in living organisms. Excretion. This is the ability of an organism to remove waste products from metabolism. In animals, there are three excretory organs, which include the skin, the lungs, and the kidneys. Excretory substances include urea, produced in the liver and removed by our kidneys or skin, and carbon dioxide, produced as a byproduct of respiration, released by our lungs. Nutrition. This is the ability of taking in material for energy, growth, and development. And finally, control of internal conditions. This is the ability of an organism to control its internal conditions within narrow limits, known as homeostasis. Examples include temperature, water, and glucose. Together, we can use these characteristics if we want to classify something as living or not. There are four eukaryotic organisms. These are protoctis, plants, animals, and fungi. These are organisms whose cells contain membrane-bound organelles. Organelles are subcellular structures that have particular functions inside of a cell. Examples include the nucleus, which contain genetic material and control the activities of the cell, or the mitochondria, where most of the energy is released from respiration. Let's take a look at different eukaryotic organisms in detail, starting with plants, whose key features include they're multicellular, meaning that they're made from more than one type of cell. They are able to carry out a process called photosynthesis, which is how plants make their own food. To do this, they need chloroplasts. These are organelles which contain green pigments called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll are responsible for trapping sunlight to allow photosynthesis to occur. Their cells have cell walls made from a carbohydrate called cellulose. Cellulose helps plants to remain stiff and upright. In plants, excess glucose is stored as starch or sucrose. These carbohydrates are an essential source of energy used in respiration. Examples in plants include herbaceous legumes such as peas and cereal such as maize. Our second eukaryotic organism is animals. Again, like plants, they are multicellular organisms, meaning they're made from more than one type of cell. However, their cells do not contain chloroplasts and therefore they are unable to carry out photosynthesis. They have no cell walls as part of their structure. Animals, however, have nervous coordination. This allows them to move from one place to another. In animals, excess glucose is stored as glycogen. Glycogen is made from many glucose molecules and is stored in the liver and muscles. Examples of animals include mammals such as the fox or insects such as the housefly. Our third eukaryotic organism is fungi, whose features include they can be single-celled or they can be organized into a mycelium and multicellular. If you look at this picture here, you can see their branch structure. The mycelium is made up of branching filament called hyphae. They're not able to carry out photosynthesis. Their cells have cell walls made from a molecule called chitin. They feed through a process known as saprotrophic nutrition. Let's take a closer look at how this happens. The fungi will secrete enzymes out of their cells onto the dead organism, organic matter. The enzymes will digest this organic material. As this happens outside of the cell, it is known as extracellular digestion. The products of digestion are then absorbed by the fungi. Like animals, they store carbohydrates as glycogen. Examples of fungi include mucor, which has a typical hyphal structure, and yeast, which is single-celled. Our final eukaryotic organism is protoctis. Features of protoctis include most are unicellular, meaning they're single-celled, but some are multicellular, made from many cells. 
all of them will have a nucleus as part of their cell structure. However, some may have cell walls and chloroplasts, some therefore photosynthesize, and some that can't photosynthesize feed on organic substances made from other living things. Examples of protoctis that you need to remember are chlorella, which have chloroplasts and are more like plants, and amoeba, which is found in pond water and has features like an animal cell. A pathogenic example, which is one that causes disease, is plasmodium, responsible for causing malaria. <laughs> Prokaryotic organisms, like bacteria, are organisms which do not have membrane-bound organelles, such as the nucleus and the mitochondria. Features of bacteria include they are single-celled organisms and are much smaller than plant and animal cells. They have a cell wall, a cell membrane, and a cytoplasm. They do, however, lack a nucleus, but contain circular DNA called plasmids or a single DNA loop. Some bacteria can carry out photosynthesis, but most feed off other living or dead <laughs> organisms by saprotrophic nutrition. Examples of bacteria include Lactobacillus bulgaricus, which is a rod-shaped bacteria and is used in the production of yogurt from milk. Pneumococcus, which is a spherical bacterium that is the pathogen that causes pneumonia. Pathogens are microorganisms that cause disease. There are four types, viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protoctis. Viruses are not considered living organisms as they are unable to carry out the life processes we have spoken about in previous videos. Features of viruses include they are not living organisms made from cells, but they are small particles and are smaller than bacteria. They are parasitic and can only reproduce inside of living cells. In order to do this, it first needs to enter the host. The protein coat and the DNA is replicated. The new virus particles are produced and the host cell bursts, which is called lysis. Other nearby cells then become infected with the virus. Other features of a virus include they have no cellular structure, but have a protein coat and contain one type of nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA. Examples of a virus include the tobacco mosaic virus, which causes discoloring of tobacco plant leaves by preventing the formation of chloroplasts, the HIV virus that causes AIDS, and the influenza virus that causes the flu. Hi, my name is Mr. Science, aka Salim. If you're new to the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. And for more teaching resources, you can visit my website at www.mrscience.co.uk.